Despite the challenges of climate change and rising production costs, Guyana's rice farmers continue to demonstrate their commitment and determination, producing increasingly more paddy per acre, utilizing the new high-yielding varieties being engineered by the GRDB's research station. But there is a small percentage of Guyana's 6,000-odd rice farmers who have continued to realize comparatively low yields, approximately 1,000 of them, some of whom get as low as 20 to 25 bags per acre, way below the break-even number of 28 bags per acre. Soon after taking over the reins of the agriculture sector, Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa had signaled his intention to double current rice production levels by 2025. One of the measures announced to realize this goal was to have the GRDB work with the nation's poor performing farmers in order to have their yields brought up to par with those of other farmers. The initial number of farmers included in the pilot project was 34, most of whom are now reporting significantly higher yields. According to Minister Mustafa, the results being enjoyed by the targeted group of farmers augurs well for the national effort at bringing down the cost of production while improving production and productivity of the sector. He is assured that the program will be expanded to include all the nation's low-yielding farmers. And we'll expand it across the country because we, our, our, our objective is to increase production in every single area. So when a farmer would have increased his yield, that will help us to increase our production level. And with the demands that we are having now, we are having new markets coming and stream in the, in, in the rice um, sector. We have to up our um, game. We have seen that the GRDB 16 that we have launched a new variety is, is, is go, uh, doing well. We, have we were able to move production from 39 bags per acre to about between 55 to 60 bags per acre. And some farmers are saying that they are getting more. Right? Our aim is to bring down the cost of production and increase yield, more production. As you rightly said, we are working with those low-yielding farmers and we will not do it in one part of the country. What I ask them to do, that we should have now a database of these low-yielding farmers across the country so that we can target them to do better agriculture practices to enhance production and we'll work with them to enhance it. As I said, that this field school will continue We'll do this year, I am hoping that we will do a number of field schools across the country where that farmers will share experiences and also benefit from the kind of technical advice that we will be giving out to these areas. Um, when you go around the, um, the country now, I don't know as a, as a freelancer, you, you and you have been involved in agriculture um, in terms of doing these programs. In a number of areas, you see the kind of interest that is there right now moving in all the sector. Right? Sometimes people want to get into rice production, cash crop production, livestock production, all the sector they want to get into. So that, I, that is the kind of attitude I want to see. That is the kind of interest I want to see and I think that it augurs well for us as a country moving forward. Spearheading the interventions with the low-yielding farmers in the pilot group was Deputy General Manager of the GRDB, Mr. Kulde Bragnot. He explained that failure to follow the six points to a successful harvest, as promoted by the entity, has been at the root of the low yields being realized by the farmers. Over the past season, the, the board has been working with um, these farmers who were obtaining low yields. And when we are talking about low yields, it refers to those farmers who are, who have traditionally, or for the past couple of years, uh, are receiving less than 25 bags per acre. Mind you, these, this can be region specific, meaning that 25 bags per acre in one, in one region can very well be, well, a low yield, but in other regions, the low yields can be as much as less than 30 bags per acre. So it, it depends on the region because some of the regions, the, the yields are traditionally higher than the other regions. So it's more region specific. But for our, in our context, we are using less than 25 bags per acre. And the reason why, why we're doing this is because like you mentioned, we want to, to bring the yields up of those farmers because Obviously, in the overall average of, of the country, those, those farmers who are obtaining these yields would bring down the, the overall average. But more importantly, these farmers, if they continue to, to perform in this manner, they will at some point in time go out of cultivation because 
because cost of production is is a uh, we know what it is but it's high but you, you wouldn't want their 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 income or their their use to be less than less than the, their cost obviously in that situation they will go out of business so the board together with the ministry of agriculture would want to see these farmers continue to grow rice they have they are they are farmers who for almost all of their, their life has been um, doing this this um, job and therefore we wouldn't want to see them you know going out of business so it's our duty to bring these farmers up on board to get them to improve on on what they're doing uh, to provide the technical support to, to these farmers to ensure that they they they, they improve we uh, so what what are the areas that we are we are working on now we have varieties that that are very has very high potential and uh, we also have the the management which we all know the, the, the six points practice and now it's being um, called the improved management practices but basically there are the six improved management practices we so we do have the varieties that that has the potential to give very high yields and also the, the improved management we have seen that farmers who who would have applied the or adopted the improved management with these new varieties they have excellent yields as much as 60 bags per acre so these these practices we want those farmers um, to adopt them as well because for the most part we know that they are not they're not doing it and that's that's the reason why they're not getting the kind of yields barring there might be some other issues like um, crop protection uh, not using the right quality seeds and so but um, overall it, it's the practice that uh, or the way how they are managing the rice or how they are growing the rice and that's the area where we are focusing on to get them to to incorporate these practices in their in their um, in the growing of, of the crop we have had excellent results with, with the farmers do, who we have worked with over the last season or so we work with, a, with about two to four farmers and we have seen their their use um, improving by by as much as five five to seven bags per acre this this is a lot compared to what what they have been receiving uh, before so it's it's showing that once you can once you can adopt these practices once you can grow your rice in a, in a very scientific way using the improved varieties and having having the the management of it being done in the right way this will allow these varieties them to realize their their real potential according to the grdb official the high yielding potential of varieties such as the grdb 15 and 16 will never be realized if farmers do not engage in the basic practices that ensure that conditions are optimized for the full yield potential to be had he singled out the sourcing of quality seed and applying the correct seed rate when sowing and ensuring proper nutrition management etc according to mr ragnott it is now a question of do or die farmers either do what is necessary to increase their yields to economically feasible levels or be forced to give up rice cultivation so our focus at the board here is to as much as possible get all these farmers on board with the improved management and um, we have seen that we have seen over the years the majority of farmers in the industry are adopting these improved management practices it's just that these few that we have now that that we have to bring on board because if you look if we look at the at the cost of production we will see we will see now especially for this crop the cost of production has actually gone up and that's because of um, you know fertilizer prices and input prices and so so in order for a farmer to break even he has to he has to get at least 28 bags per acre that's just to break even so if what I'm saying is that if a farmer gets 28 bags per acre now he wouldn't be making any money. He's just covering his costs. 
So he has to get above that. With these low yielding farmers, when you look at the numbers, at their yields, we can definitely say that you know, they are, they are subsidizing their, their, their cultivation, meaning that they're getting income from some other, some other activity and uh, supplementing um, their, their rice, their rice, um, their rice production. So, unless, unless we work with them, unless we give them kind of the necessary guidance uh, and support, you know, based on those numbers, you will see that they will definitely um, not able to continue uh, planting rice in the future. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't want to see that happen. And um, the first season was very successful. We continue to work with these farmers. We have those farmers who we work with the last season and we have new farmers that we have brought on board for this season to continue to, to work with them as well. So the aim of, 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 the, of, the, of this project, if you wanted to put it that way, is to ensure that these farmers um, receive the necessary guidance, the necessary support from, from the GRDB and the Ministry of Agriculture, thereby allowing them to improve their, their, their productivity and their production as well, and to ensure that the, the income the income is increased. The GRDB's Deputy General Manager stressed that the entire premise of a successful crop begins with the sourcing of quality seed paddy. Clean seed and quality seed um, contributes to about 10 to 15 percent increase in yield, just using clean seeds alone. So right away we, we can see that those farmers, one of the things that contributed to their low yield or decrease in production is because they were not using clean seeds. And um, if I can go back and, and illustrate or highlight what, what, the, what the six points are, we will see how important, how critical clean seeds and germinable seeds or quality seeds is important to this program. Because we, in the six points program, we talk about time of sowing. Well, and I don't want to you know, go through the, the whole, um, all these um, factors now, but it's time of sowing, it's seed, seed rate, and that's using a, a, a moderate seed rate, and um, seed treatment, weed control, nutrition, and water management. So coming back to, to the seed, in, in, in this, in this um, improve management, when we talk about seed, we are talking here about clean seeds, um, quality seeds, seed that has over 80% germination. Because traditionally farmers are accustomed to use very, very high seed, rate, seed rates, meaning 160 pounds, 180 pounds per acre. In, in this improved management, we're talking about 100, 100 to 120 pounds per acre, maximum 140 pounds of clean seeds per acre. Now, if we don't have quality seed, clean seed, and seed that meet the requirements, the over 80% germination, definitely, if you're going to use these lower seed rates and it's not germinating, it does not have the quality uh, in terms of, of purity. It therefore means that you, your plant population will be less, will be way less than, than what it's supposed to be. And obviously the yield will not be there and also the production will not be there. So, so seeds, seed is very, that's the foundation. Seed, seeds are the foundation or high quality seeds are the foundation of a successful crop. Another aspect of the interventions for the low yielding farmers was the provision of soil tests to analyze and determine the composition of the farmer's cultivation and so be able to provide whatever is needed. What it tells you, it tells you what are the deficiencies in the soil, what nutrients are lacking in the soil for, for proper plant growth. So you take the sample, you have it analyzed and, it, and, and it, the results will, will, will indicate what nutrients are, are deficient in the soil. Also, it can, it can tell you what, what nutrition, what elements are in quantities that is not desired by the plant. So we can have deficiency, we can also have toxicity. 
toxicity is not good for the plant as well. But the soil test gives you uh, a good idea as to what, what, the, what, the, what the plant requires. Well, we know what the plant requires, but it tells you what, what are deficient. And therefore, what you have to do to, to supplement or in order to meet the needs or the requirements of the plant. So once we have that, and this is where we have to start, we have, we have to be more informed. We're starting from an informed position in terms of nutrition. If you don't do a soil test, you're basically guessing. And that is what you don't want to do because each, each plot will, because the practices are different by the farmers, they will, in terms of a fertilizer application, the, the soil test result will differ. You know, some farmers actually, they say they can use their neighbor's plot or the neighbor's recommendation um, for, their, for their plot. Sometimes it works, but um, we have to bear in mind that the neighbor practice might be different and therefore his, his soil test result can, can be different and, and you, you can um, be guided in the wrong direction there if you use his, um, his results. I took my cameras to the rice growing regions of the country for a first hand account of the improved yields being enjoyed by the low yielding farmers who are part of the Ministry of Agriculture's Yield Improvement Project. I am from Sandford, West Kanji Bodies, and I'm cultivating this crop 150 acres of land. Um, previously, we did around two something to three, but uh, after the flood, we had to resort to moving down and then stepping up again. Right. Um, the yield for us is around uh, practically now about 29 to 30 bags. Uh, we hope that some measures that were being implemented, we hope to get about 32 to 33 bags in this upcoming acre um, crop. Well, in terms of the fertilizing application right, and the drying of the, the field, uh, when we apply the fertilizer, we never used to do that before because of the water system. Right, and we, we are still playing with some irrigation and drain system, but uh, we're trying to work to the best of our ability with the resources that we have in terms of working towards what uh, GRE would, GRE would want us to come to. Um, we have the, we were talking about the six point pro project, but we have not implemented as yet uh, due to some technical situations and so on. Well, it was very much poor. Well, I, um, it was poor, and then um, I get to work with Miss Luan, and she encouraged me to do a six-point uh, thing. But then she had to explain the six-point to me, and the crap gone. Here, I was lucky. I got um, thirty, uh, about thirty-seven bucks per acre. Yeah, because before then I was cutting. Within, I was within the 20s, 29, 28, 27, around there. Around there. So she encouraged me, she walked along with me, and she let me. Well, I bought seedling from them, and she told me it was the recommended um, seed, um, pong, 120, 100 to 120. And I had to sow within May the uh, 15th to June the 30th. And in the November, the 15th, the December, the um, 3rd, 4th. And this plant, generally, I used to cut close to um, 400 bag. I used to. But um, the, the, the crop just prior to, to the, the trial crop, uh, I cut um, like 22 bag per acre. You understand? Uh, the trial give 38 bag. The trial gave 38 back per acre. So the trial was fruitful. But, but what did you do different than you, you normally do under the guidance of GRD? Um, well, all the practices, all the practices that GR, GRDB um, has, the water management, seed rate, uh, time, uh, timing, all these practices, I, I tried to uh, stick to the practices. Early management practices. I try to stick to the, these practices, and this is what is 
helping you to increase the yield. So before this slow yielding program started, how much bags per acre you used to get? Yeah, like 25 bags. And with the intervention of the extension officer, how much bags you're currently getting? Yeah, no. Before we started this program with farmers with low yield, uh, how much paddy you used to harvest per acre before? Like? Before, uh, like 15, 20. Okay, and how much paddy you getting now after the program? Like 30, 30 for your My yield used to be low, and since I make the extension officer satay so cram, I start getting bags per acre more. My yield firstly was be, was be like 28 to 30 bags per acre. After that, for two crops now, I meet Mr. Sokram and um, he told me what to do. Because I was applying the fertilizer at a late stage and after that my yield rise from 33 to 35 bags per acre. Alright, so yeah. in terms of you, you're getting 15 bags extra? Yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. What does it mean for your pocket? Well, my pocket. It means a lot in my pocket. Yeah. We get this rice field, we used to get very low, low, low yield. And two crop, by now, we get 28 bag a year. And from 28, we work with the GRDB. By them, we get 31 bag a year. All the farmers we spoke with have encouraged all other low-yielding farmers to adopt the GRDB six points to a successful crop. In the meantime, Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa has indicated that his ministry will be extending the interventions to all low-yielding farmers, with a view, ultimately, to have a uniform yield across the country.